Finding the best cheap Wi-Fi router has never been that easy. So I set a goal to find the best cheap Wi-Fi router under $50 with the best features available in this price point. So after lots of research, I was able to find this featured rich cheap Wi-Fi router and it cost only $30 on Amazon at the time of this review. And it is from a company named Wi-Flyer. I will leave the link to the router in the description below. Let's first look at the features. The router supports 1200 megabits per second Wi-Fi speed with dual band, 5.8 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. It has four external antennas, two antennas for 2.4 gigahertz and two antennas for 5.8 gigahertz band, four one gig ethernet ports, one one gig WAN port for internet, USB port to connect USB storage, SD card reader slot, NAT setup, NAS functionality, firewall, VPN, QoS, guest network, and the features list goes on and on. Setting up this router was very simple and easy. Router comes with great manual instructions on how to set up this Wi-Fi router. To my surprise, router has very clean interface. At the home screen, you will find detailed information about the Wi-Fi router, including device status with CPU usage and memory usage and number of online terminal devices. Also, you will be able to see WAN traffic information with real-time flow chart for upload and downstream traffic. Interface state for WAN and LAN, including MAC address and IP address information. Wi-Fi state for 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz band, including current Wi-Fi channel information, MAC address information and network name and type of security. Then moving on to the network tab, here you will find WAN connection information, LAN connection information, DHCP status, static route information, terminal control setup, QoS setup, NAT setup, and under Wi-Fi setup tab, here you can set 2.4 GHz wireless configuration, for example, changing SSID, bandwidth, select Wi-Fi channel or leave it to auto, set encryption, wireless password. You can also create black and white list by using MAC address filtering. All these settings are the same for 5.8 GHz channel as well. Here you can also set up guest network and have an option to adjust TX power adjustments as well. Moving on to the advanced setup, here you can set up firewall, DMZ, DDNS, port forwarding, black and white list, website filtering, parental control, and AC rules. Under service application option, you can set up cloud, PPTP, L2TP setup, portal servers, disk management for external USB storage devices, file sharing setup for over the network storage, SSL and VPN. Under AC management, you can find the list of devices connected to the router, also configuration template, firmware upgrade, as well reboot, change management password, and modify the templates. Under system management, you can do system upgrade, restore settings, and basic setup. Under system tools, you have network analysis tool, base station survey, traffic monitoring, and a log warning. So there are plenty of router settings available to be configured. This router has great all-round features. So now let's dive into the Wi-Fi speed and range test. So the router is placed in a basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. So I will be testing router connection on different parts of the house and floors to see how well it performs in terms of speed and coverage. So here you can see on the phone screen we have Wi-Fi 5 GHz and Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz are the two Wi-Fi connections from this router. And for reference Wi-Fi name Batman is a Netgear RB AC3000 mesh Wi-Fi setup. So here I'm doing first test and I'm standing 30 feet away from the router in the basement with a couple of walls between the Wi-Fi router and the phone. I have 100 by 100 Verizon Fios connection and so far the Wi-Fi router has solid Wi-Fi connection with good speed. Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a second Wi-Fi speed connection test. Again so far connection is strong at good speed. I'm able to connect 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands without any issue. Now let's move to the second floor of the house. 
and do a third Wi-Fi speed and connection test. Here we have two floors and few walls between the router and the phone. Again so far, the signal strength is strong for both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz band. Speed has dropped a little bit, I would say close to 50% connection speed drop, but enough bandwidth to handle any Wi-Fi need. Now for the final and toughest test, for this I'm going outside the house. Here we have now stone wall, main floor and few regular walls between the Wi-Fi router and the phone, and the distance is close to 60 feet or more. Here as you can see Wi-Fi connection speed has dropped, but still able to connect to 2.4 GHz band. But 5 GHz band is no longer available. So I guess we are hitting the limit here and I'm going to stop. Now let's do a USB storage read and write test to see how router performs. In the USB storage read and write test, router was able to achieve 3 to 4 megabytes per second write and 5 megabytes per second read, which is not bad considering the price point. In order to figure out what type of processor this router is using, I removed the back cover of the router and to my surprise, wireless router has some great hardware specs. It is powered by MediaTek MT7628KNA processor. It's a 1 core 32 bit CPU running at 580 MHz with 16 bit DDR2 DRAM, 512 megabits DDR2 RAM, and also it has two antennas connected to 2.4 GHz band and two antennas connected to 5.8 GHz band. Overall, $30 Wi Fi router performed extremely well in this review. Equipped with features like 4 1 gig Ethernet ports, 1 gig WAN port for internet, USB storage, SD card reader, NAT functionality, NAS, firewall, VPN, QoS, and guest network are other features hard to find in this price point. Wi Fi router delivered great coverage and had no problem covering 5,000 square feet house with good Wi Fi speed in most areas of the house. I highly recommend this router to anyone who is in the market for best cheap Wi-Fi router. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.